Hey guys, wanted to go over how to get your HPLC data into Logger Pro so we can uh, work it up here. So um, the first thing is you want to go to the email that I sent you, okay, and the uh, the file is right here, and it's basically just um, a bunch of data that's in a spreadsheet document. So you can open up, open that up as um, whatever you want to. You could use Excel, you could use um, Google Sheets. That's what I uh, do, just because it's easiest. All right, so once you have it into Google Sheets, you can click on it. It's going to take you to uh, the data. And what you want to do is, let's see here. Oh, I already, I already did a little bit with this, but um, what you want to do is select the two columns of data that you want to transfer over. Okay, so here I'm going to take. Uh, columns G and H, all right, and I'm going to go uh, Command C and copy it, and then I'm going to go to my Logger Pro uh, program, okay, I'm going to open up a new Logger Pro here, okay, and then I'm going to just insert that data, Control V, into uh, Logger Pro. Now, when it comes into Logger Pro, it's kind of got this funky sort of dot. It's like marking every um, point. Uh, we don't want that, so let's just double click on the graph, go to graph options, take off point symbols, and then go to connect points. That'll make it look a little prettier. And there we go, okay? Okay, now once you have your data in the Logger Pro, you're going to want to clean it up a little bit. First thing you always, always, always need to do is label the data. So go up here to the left on X, double click. We're going to call X time, because that's what it is from the HPLC data. Uh, and this time is in minutes. Okay, and then the Y values, that's intensity, and the units aren't very important for intensity, but they're, uh, just so you know, they're milli, milli absorption units. Okay, so now we've got our labels and our units, uh, but if you look at the data, right, um, the real data that we care about is down here on the bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of select this and then go up to the little um, and we, we maximize it. And then you'll notice that the, uh, the data is actually below zero, the, like the baseline. If you look at the baseline of all this, it's below zero and we need it to be above zero if we're going to want to integrate it. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put the cursor here like right on this baseline that's kind of right here on the bottom right. And if I look at the Y value on the bottom left of the um, graph, you can see the coordinates there on the bottom left. If you look at the Y value it says negative 12, 6, 7, 7. So that means that baseline of the data is below the zero line by 12,677 units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new calculated data column. I'm going to add that in to the Y intensity data. Okay, and here's how we do it. We go to um, data, new calculated column, Okay, I'm going to call this um, adjusted intensity data. Okay, and the units are going to be the same. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, okay, I want to take the intensity column. So I'm going to click on this, intensity. 
And then to every value in that intensity column, I want to add 12,677 to each value. And that's going to bring it up to the zero line. Okay. So now you'll notice that I have a new calculated column. Okay, the adjusted intensity. Um, and every value is 12,677 greater than it was originally. Okay. So now let's put, we double click on the graph. Instead of talking about the, the unadjusted, let's show the adjusted intensity column, right? And now you can see that, it's Easter day tomorrow. Now you can see that if we zoom in back to our, our region of data that we actually care about, you can see that all the peaks are now above zero, which is what we want. Okay, so now we've got our data adjusted uh, in Logger Pro. Uh, now we want to go and uh, integrate it so we can actually see like how big each peak is with respect to the whole amount, right? Because this is um, HPLC data, okay? So each peak represents a compound that's coming through, coming off of our column, right? So the size of the peak represents the relative amount of that compound in our mixture, okay? So we want to go through and find the relative size of each peak with respect to all of the compounds that came through um, the column. So um, if you want to find the, um, if you want to integrate the entire amount, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, try to select, I'm going to select the entire uh, group of peaks here, and then we're going to come up here to the top, and this is the, it says integral there. You click on that, it's going to integrate, right? And it's going to give us the area under all of the peaks, okay? And you can see that the area is located right here. Um, that would be 15,560, okay? So that's a, um, a good number you want to... Uh, write that down somewhere because we're going to need it later. Okay? Now, what you want to do is you want to figure out the area of each peak relative to the amount uh, of area under all the peaks. So I'm going to pick this big peak here in the middle and I'm going to highlight it. Okay, so I'm going to get that peak there. And if I hit the integral again, I'm going to tighten up the, the range here a little bit. Okay, you can see that this number is 6,174. If you take this number and divide it by the original, which is 15,560, I believe. 6,174 divided by 15,000. Uh, was it 660, 560? Okay, so you can see that this, you get this decimal, that's 0.396 or about 0.4, right? So 40% of the total area of all these peaks is that area under the big peak, okay? So what I, what I like to do is I go here see here, insert text, drag this over here, All right, and I'll say 40% here. So now I know that this peak is 40% of my total area. Okay, so now we're going to go through and integrate all of the peaks and then put their percentage above each peak.
So there you have it. Um, all the peaks are uh, labeled with their relative percentages. Um, now, some, some of these make more sense than others, right? I mean, if you look over here, you've got one standalone peak, and you know that that standalone peak is 5% of the whole. But there's some peaks that are kind of overlap, like right here, right? We say, I call this 7.9%, 7 but this is obviously three or four peaks that are kind of overlapping. So it's not a perfect, perfect system, but um, for the peaks that are standalone, you can get their um, relative percent uh, abundances. So hope this helps.